Saturday, I'll tip your tenor every weekend. Isn't that <laughs> lovely? And I thought that was fantastic. And and I, I told this story tonight um, on on um, one of the, 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 the stations that you'll know about. And um, they, they, they asked me, did I know anything about football? And I said, no. I, said, I, I couldn't tell you anything about football. I couldn't tell you anything about um, the, 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 the Parkhead team or the Ibrox team. Um, but I said, I, I can tell you that um, the, the, the guy was absolutely fantastic. Um, and that, that, that was the story that I told on on one of the foot, football phone-ins tonight. So I just thought I, I wanted to share that with you. That's a beautiful, beautiful story, matey. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's funny that, you know, not not being anything to do with football, but um, it brings back some memories of of um, your work, you know, uh, 25 years ago when I was playing um, in, in the Moat House um, for, uh, they call it then, for beer money, because that's yes. about all you got, actually, you know. So, I just, I just thought I'd throw that in there. I tonight. think that is but, absolutely lovely because uh, I'll tell you this, uh, meaty boy. Um, I used to uh, get my equity card and stuff singing in the miners' clubs, and they used oh, to say, uh, "No, we don't have a lot of money." All the miners' clubs spoke like that. We don't have a lot of money, son, but you can drink as much as you like. And I thought, well. You're not going to end up with any money, but you could end up quite a young alcoholic, you know. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, what this brings me back to. Um, when I was just checking the radio tonight, they didn't have a, 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 a delay machine. Now, you, you have a delay machine, which means obviously if MD says anything inappropriate, that you can quickly edit that out. And yes. I was surprised to find that um, this certain radio station didn't have that, and um, the, the the guy said to me, "Well, watch your p's and q's, and don't say anything inappropriate." Um, and I, I was quite surprised. At you that. thought we wouldn't get away with that on Scotty McClure? It's no, actually called. That. It's actually called a profanity delay device. Right, and it's about ten seconds, isn't it? Uh, well, like you can set it. I used to work on seven seconds. Uh, yeah, and it's also yeah. quite good in case anything was libelous. And I think I've told you the story of a very, very big uh, solicitor's firm uh, in, in, I think it was Manchester, very senior. It may have been London. And the I wasn't there, but the big wigs from radio were attending. And the senior partner was in because of the importance of all the radio people being there. And he didn't really say much. He was sitting with his beautiful grey silk suit and his pink silk tie and his white shirt and his hair all quaffed up. And at the end of it, they'd said, so Scotty deals with, with, with libel and things, yes. And he said, um, so they said, does anybody have any questions? And he spoke for the first time. He said, could I ask, um, how long does um, Scotty have to decide if something's libelous or not? And the programmer said, seven seconds. And he went, oh, my goodness. It can sometimes take us months. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? That's very true. That's, that's very true. Yeah, you know, so, so that was the stuff. So it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was wonderful stuff. So it shows you. So you had to be on your toes because some people just maybe didn't have the knowledge and they might say something they shouldn't have said, but they didn't do it, uh, you know, with with any malice. Well, it puts the, it puts the company in, in very much kind of um, on kind of uh, problems with, it's, it's not off cam or whatever society regulated by radio transmission. Yes. But obviously, if somebody comes along um, and says something inappropriate, that it can't be edited out. Um, which is dangerous to that radio station. Uh, so I, I, I would be questioning the fact. I, I mean, a sweary word, a sweary word isn't the end of the world, but I prefer not to have it because we're guests in people's houses. Well, exactly. Yes, uh -huh. and it's under the 9 p.m. threshold as yes. well. Uh, so, yeah. So, and I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm no saint, as you know, but I have said to people at work, 
I don't come to my work to hear bad language. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and, yeah, and, well, and people understand that. Well, this certain radio station, I would think that it needs to grow. Um, and I don't want to float your boat, but it does need somebody, um, probably not, that's uh, probably a true example, probably does need actually you feel stopped. Um, and, I, you know, that's um, something that I have to say that um, would grow this radio station because it's in Glasgow, it's born for Glasgow. Um, you know, the studios are in Glasgow and um, uh, it has to be probably... Um, a, a station that I think would thrive um, if you were, um, you know, in it on a daily basis or just Monday to Friday. Uh, so I think that people really need to understand that um, they're missing um, something on that station uh, because, quite frankly, the only time I tune into it was on a Sunday morning um, when they have the business programme and the occasional... Um, night just before I venture off to my choir practice on a Wednesday. Um, and without mentioning choir. without mentioning any names of this radio station, do you think it would benefit from a nighttime phone-in show? Absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. Um, I don't understand why um, DJs get paid the money um, to sit and just programme um, CDs upon CDs upon song lists and take the odd call. Um, there is no talent um, in that, and I'm sorry if I'm sounding quite outrageous when I say that, um, but the fact that you have um, the history of what you have done um, with national radio um, in, in the UK um, is testament to the, the success and I really hope that people should be thinking um, about how to um, grow a radio station by having um, a live talk show and I don't see anybody in Scotland currently doing that so um, I have suggested it to the radio station um, whether it's fallen on deaf ears or not You're very kind but you and I live by the parable of the sower and the seed well, this, this is it, um, and the, the thing that, that you're capable of doing um, is diversifying into the, 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 the current generation. You're able um, to um, bring subjects um, of current and history, and that people like that are scarce. Um, in the, the media and I think that they are not um, they're not listening basically um, and whether or not it's it's something that maybe they can't afford um, which I always think is maybe the case um, because at the end of the day let's be honest um, you're not going to come to this uh, McClure doesn't come salary. cheap people used to say Scotty McClure might not be cheap but he is the best <laughs> Well, if you want, if you want, at the end of the day, is, is, is my motto in life is if you want a monkey, you pay peanuts. Well, yes. I mean, I don't know if you remember the Trouble at the Top program when we launched Century Radio in Manchester. And um, the documentary said, and now it comes to the biggest investment, his biggest investment, you know, Scotty McClue. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, it, 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 you, you come as a brand. Um, we do come as a brand, and I mean, I think that people always know this, and I think that we can get down to some discussion because the phone in the Scotty McClue phone in, as you well know, operates on so many different levels. So there's something there for everyone. If somebody wants to phone up and stick their tongue out, they can do that. If somebody wants to talk about who should be the next prime minister, they can do that. If somebody wants to talk about the household of Mary, Queen of Scots or James the First, they can do that. I've said it before, Scotty. I think the, the, the whole society of phone-ins has been destroyed by keyboard warriors. I've, I've, I've said that a million times to you. I can't stand But is that intentional uh, because of the power of it? I mean, let's be honest. 
Um, we don't know why. We still to this day don't know why something as successful as Scotty McClue disappeared from Scott FM. Right? So we haven't quite got to the bottom of that. And it's, you know, 25 years ago or whatever. But having said that, it was the most successful radio program in Scotland ever. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know? let's um, take, take an example of, of just just something like that. In, in those days before the internet, you know, we, we had things like, um, you know, the ZX Spectrum or the Commodore Amiga. And actually, believe it or not, in, in some countries now, we're having these retro comebacks of, of games, Atari, ST, um, Amstrad, these guys are, are realising that um, people of my generation are wanting to recreate their childhood. Yes. Uh, not childhood, even just, you know. It's just well, it's like stuff, vinyl, uh, vinyl records coming back, isn't it? Exactly. And, and, you know, and what should be included in that is, is the, 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 I mean, there is only, there is no one else to compare to the, what they called the, the shock jock in those days. You, and I was never really actually a shock jock. Anyway, that was just because they have to label you with something. D. Gourley says Scotty could never be replaced. Scotty is radio and he belongs there. And two beautiful kisses. Yeah, well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you, buddy, uh, and, and this is my, my, my final word on it. If I had a radio station, I'll tell you what, you'd be back on Radio Gold because I think that, honestly, there are people out there missing um, the golden goose, as they would say, um, because at the end of the day, you know, that's always going to be something that um, will be remembered. And hats off to you. Um, you're still a household name. We're still a household name, my dear man. And it's thanks to good people like yourself. And just before you go, you know, do you know that Westminster Abbey, of course, was a Catholic church? because it was built around, what, 1100 or 900 or whatever it was, and it was the great church of St. Peter. I'll tell you better than that. Um, a good friend of mine um, who was the assistant organist at Westminster Cathedral, uh, a guy called James O'Donnell. Wonderful, um, yes. Later became the director of music at Westminster Cathedral yes. and then resigned yes. and then applied the job at Westminster Abbey and he is now today still the director of music at Westminster Abbey so from somebody um, who was a, a Catholic Christian who then wanted to better his career and decided that he has done the best that he can for the cathedral who then went to apply to a promotion was granted that and he, had, he went from the cathedral to the Abbey, so we have... Well, bless him, more, more power to his elbow, because, as you well know, you could hardly get a cigarette paper between High Anglican and the Catholic Mass. That's correct, that's correct. You yeah, know? So we have, so, so we, we have a director of music, cathedral organist, um, ca Catholic cathedral organist, playing in the Abbey, which I think is absolutely fantastic. My first post was in the Church of Scotland, and it was one of the best um, musical experiences in Edinburgh um, that I could ever remember. Wow. Um, so it, it really was fantastic. And did you, did you give it loudly with some of the old Scottish psalms? I did, I did. So, I was fortunate enough to play at the Evensong um, at St Mary's Episcopal Cathedral. Oh, I know it as well. Wow, what a history of music St Mary's has. It was absolutely fantastic, and I was delighted to meet the, the Dr. Dennis Townhill. Yes, um, Dr. Townhill. And do you remember, do you know that when you were playing that organ, yes, with, with all stops out, nobody would be able to hear a song at the back of the kirk? Yes. They wouldn't be able yes. to hear a thing. I can remember singing, singing in St. Mary's Palmerston Place, the organ was giving it full laldi. I don't think that's a stop, by the way, the laldi stop. And um, you couldn't hear a word that it was singing. Yeah, it's very, very nice. It's a, it's a, it was a four-manual Henry Willis. Gorgeous thing, a Father Willis. 
It was a father, Willis, yes. Gorgeous uh, thing. It's been restored, um, but it is still there today, and it's absolutely fantastic. It is the only church in Scotland that has daily choral even song. Love it. So, nice to have spoken to you again. Always lovely speaking to you. We're just about out of time, Numpteen, but thank you. And Mummy Paws has joined us and said, I'm late tonight because I was at church. So, there you are. Okay, buddy boy, all the best. Love you lots. Thanks again. Dinky Dusa. What a fine fellow. There we are. Numpty Heat in full form tonight. And he's suggesting McClue gets back on the radio. Be back on the radio before you know it. Mark my words, says Christopher. I thank you, Christopher. We do. What a great man, says Keith. You're very kind, Keith. Absolutely low, Professor Numpty Heat. So there we have it. When caravans rock, it means it's either windy or someone's having a good time. Right, not to heat. Hold on to your wellies, son, says Jerry. My caravan is rocking like a plane with turbulence. There was a lovely story I heard recently about a transatlantic airliner out in the middle of the Atlantic. The turbulence got really quite bad, and it was, boom, dropping. And this traveler got so anxious, he said to the air stewardess, he said, um, Miss, Miss, could you tell me where the life jackets are? And she said, Oh, now you're interested. <laughs> I love it. Dinky do. So there we go. I love it. Now, uh, we're going to have to dash, guys. We're right out of time. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Love to our beautiful TikTokers and uh, to all our lovely callers from tonight. From me, Scotty McClure, our next phone in tomorrow night. That's Thursday night, 9 o'clock sharp. Be there or be square. Until then, dinky do. Fantastic. Our lovely, lovely TikTokers. Thank you very much. We've had to dash. We love you, Scotty, says Anthony. Absolutely. What's your opinion of the RSA? I would have to work out which one you mean there. My great-great-grandfather came to Buffalo from Aberdeen. I absolutely love this. Bye, says Angela. Bye, Angela. There we are. Follow us as soon as you come on, guys. We're still live on TikTok. It's 10 o'clock. And it's lovely to be with you. And dinky do I say to you. Chewy Keepers has just joined us. Welcome, welcome to our TikTok special. We've just finished the internet phone in. Get yourselves on to Scotty McClue's YouTube channel and subscribe and tap the bell. That's what it's all about. Thank you for following me. Good evening, Scotty. Drewski, how lovely to have you with us. Drewski, I know you have to keep telling me this, but you are in America and not Canada. You're just in the north, aren't you? So there we are. Dinky do. Thank you, Emma. There we are. Oh, they're all Scottish Academy. I know it's exactly. been very, very beautiful place. Go and see their exhibitions. Oh, I didn't know we were still on. Ah, mummy paws. No, we're off the phone in, but I just thought I'd pop on. Ontario, Canada, Scotty. When will I get this right, Drisky? I've got a 50% chance, and that's twice I've got it wrong, Ontario. So you're just in Canada. Am I sort of right there? Would you get, get away with that? What time is it? It's one minute past 10 in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Good evening, says Jack Brogan. Good evening, Jack and Dinky Doo. Guys, I'm going to dash off. Lovely being with you. This is Scotty McClure saying to every single one of you, Dinky Doo, ta-ra-las.